Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and parents who couldn't get babysitters, so you have to stay home and make the best of it. Uh, my name is George Goble, and I have to make the best of that. Don't I, George? Now, uh, this program tonight is coming to you from exciting, glamorous, beautiful Hollywood, California, the world-famous home of the three-minute car wash. Isn't it, George? Two minutes? <laughs> Two minute car wash. Now last week, last week was Big Brother week, and since we weren't on the air, we weren't able to celebrate it. You see, I was out catching a cold, and I was quite busy. And uh, it's not that I had any Big Brothers myself, and I wish I did, because, you know, I think brothers are nice. Aren't brothers, George, nice? Too nice. <laughs> See, I was an only child, an only child, and it wasn't that my parents didn't care for children, it's just that they didn't care much for me. I mean, they figured if I was the best they could come up with, they just wouldn't fool with it anymore. So, uh, isn't that right, George? Well, it is. Believe thee me, I was an only child. See, I had to eat all the cake myself, and all the ice cream myself, and all the cookies myself. Oh, I tell you true, I was a chubby little rascal. <laughs> chubby, chubby, chubby. Of course, now, there are certain disadvantages to big families. You know, with a lot of children, there's always one who gets all the attention, and the other kids wind up playing second fiddle to him. Isn't that right, George? <laughs> So there you are, <laughs> and here I am, and here's the show. Isn't that right, George? Dial Shampoo, the new shampoo that gives your hair a diamond sparkle, and mild, fragrant Dial Soap that stops perspiration odor before it starts, presents... The George Goebel Show, starring George Goebel. With his guests, Miss Barbara Britton, Mr. George Liberace. You are George Liberace, aren't you? Miss Peggy King. Mr. John Scott Trotter and his orchestra. That gets you extra clean is dial, dial, dial. The soap with hexachlorophene is dial, dial, dial. After you bathe, you don't have to fuss with deodorants to protect you against odor. You just don't worry when you use dial soap every day. There's a simple reason why. Normal perspiration is odorless until skin bacteria attack it. They cause the odor. Now, ordinary good soaps can't remove skin bacteria effectively. Thousands stay on your skin, sort of like this. But Dial Soap gets rid of up to 95% of these troublemakers. It's the hexachlorophene in Dial that does it. It clings to your skin, keeping you fresh all day. Dial doesn't stop perspiration, but it does stop odor before it starts. And Dial smells good. Aren't you glad you use Dial Soap? Don't you wish everybody did? And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's a talented young man you all know and love. Your very good friend, George. where you play your violin solo. That comes... Don't you remember we... Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on television... 
George Liberace speaks. <laughs> okay, George, now you deliver that message to your brother, Lee. Thank you, George. <clears throat> Say, Lee, all those fellas at the Bureau of Internal Revenue hope you're feeling better. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, you see, we recognize our obligation to the public, and while we don't have camera crews covering the news fronts of the world, like uh, Ed Murrow or John Cameron Swayze, we do try in our humble way to present news in the making. Historical milestones such as George Liberace's first words. <laughs> and during the coming weeks, Look for such newsworthy special events as the admission of Hawaii into the Union, the admission of Alaska into the Union, the admission of Texas that there is a Union. <laughs> Look for many, many other unusual events that you'll want to write indignant letters about. George? Now... George? Yes? What do you want me to do now? Well, George, I'll tell you, while I go on with the show, why don't you go out into the audience and just roam up and down the aisles and play request numbers for the sweet old ladies sitting there? I'd be delighted. <laughs> now then, I received a letter in the mail last week that it sort of set me to thinking, and this is the letter that set me to thinking. And to the amazement of my old high school teacher, I read. <laughs> Dear Mr. Google, since my young son is in his formative years, would you be good enough to explain some of the economic theories which underlie the industrial structure of our society? Sincerely yours, Mrs. Anna Lou Friedman. Now, doesn't that set you to thinking? It did me, set me to thinking, that is. Now, the first thing I did naturally was take the letter over to the postal authorities, but they said uh, it wasn't dirty. <laughs> uh, then I took it over to my lawyer. You see, on visiting days, the warden allows me to talk to him. <laughs> see, my lawyer is in jail right now for first-degree rinky-dink. <laughs> now, rinky-dink, that's a very serious offense here in California. Uh, rinky-dink... Uh, well, that's driving a Jaguar without a smug expression. <laughs> and anyway, my lawyer told me that the letter simply means that Mrs. Friedman wants a lecture on economics. So... <laughs> now, I want you to all pay real close attention because some of these courses are for credit. <laughs> now, in economics, you... Isn't that nice? That's George playing a request for a sweet old lady. Oh, George! Madam, madam, please control yourself. Oh. Yes, madam, please do control yourself. Out there. Mercy, how you do carry on. I'm about to deliver a little lecture here on the fluctuations in currency exchange rates as related to the quantity theory of money. Oh! oh. See, I uh, have the place right here. I have a bookmark. My son made this bookmark for me in school. It's an agri uh, agricultural school, so the bookmark is made out of a strip of raw bacon. <laughs> now, the quantity theory of money asserts that prices may vary directly with the amount of money and inversely with the supply of goods. Did I hear someone ask, what is that clown talking about? <laughs> well, sir or madam, you mumbled and I'm not quite certain. It means simply this, that prices uh, fluctuate in a reverse ratio well, it's not that so much, but like the quantity of products being offered in the open market is, uh... Well, see, what it boils down to now <laughs> is this, that if you don't have money to buy anything, you have to steal. <laughs> and that's, that's not cricket. <laughs> or as they say in Havana, that's not highlight. <laughs> 
or in the vernacular of the streets, that's dirty pool. <laughs> now then, let's examine the other side of the picture. Let me cite a pertinent paragraph here from Rick Sicker and Smeltz's Currency in the Home. <laughs> of course, you all know Rick Sicker and Smeltz. So, uh, oh, uh, George. Uh, yes, Uncle John. Listen, little bitty buddy. I think you better give up this lecture on finance. Uncle John, just when I'm getting real good and confused. Now, now, George, I think you better give it up and give it a lesson in spelling instead. Spelling? <laughs> yes. You know, you won't believe it, but there's a fellow down in Chillicothe, Ohio, who can't spell hexachlorophene. No. Yes. Chillicothe? <laughs> the Paris of America? <laughs> La même, mon ami. Well. Je suis un dirty bird. <laughs> I think, Uncle John, that this would be an excellent time to show one of our illustrated lectures. Good thing. Yeah. <laughs> now, you all pay attention because you too, you too can learn how to spell hexachlorophene. And while you're doing that, I'm going out and learn how to spell Chillicothe. Ohio, that is. The soap that gets you extra clean is dial, dial, dial. The soap with hexachlorophene is dial, dial, dial. This gentle soap does something extra for complexions, something other fine face soaps just can't do. Using these two screens, let me show you the difference. Now, ordinary soaps remove dirt and makeup sort of like this. But they leave thousands of skin bacteria that often spread surface blemishes and can cause trouble under makeup. But washing with Dial every day gently clears away up to 95% of them. That's because Dial contains hexachlorophene. There's nothing else as good. So no matter how much or how little makeup you use, the fresh clearness of your skin is continuously protected underneath. Yes, Dial protects your complexion, even under makeup. Well, so much for dramatized interruptions. It's time now, it's time now for pretty perky Peggy King, and if you're not otherwise employed, let's walk over into her set. It isn't very far, I'd say, Oh, six or eight axe handles, roughly. <laughs> Hi, Peggy. Well, Peg, what's the matter? It's nothing, George. Oh, well, now, you're not being pretty and perky, Peggy. You're being pouty and pecky. <laughs> Come on, cheer up. You're a girl singer. You know, there are no business like show business. Come on, now, let a smile be your umbrella. You got a rainbow around your shoulder and a sky of blue above. <laughs> so count your blessings, Pago, my heart. Because you're the tops. Always. Night and day. <laughs> Keep your sunny side up. <laughs> and now for the lucky strike extra. <laughs> The Philip Morris Mambo. <laughs> oh, George, sometimes you're so silly. Peg, I'm just trying to cheer you up, oh, you know. No. I, come on, what's the matter? Well, it's just that George Liberace's out there in the audience playing for all the sweet little old ladies, and he won't play anything for me. Well, that happens to a lot of girls your age, Peg. You see, you're at that awkward age. You're, uh... Well, you're, you're just uh, too old for dolls and too young for Liberace. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I don't want you to worry your pretty perky little head about that pretty perky, Peggy, because I've got an idea that we'll get that George Liberace over to your table on a dead run. You do? Yes, I do. Just watch this one time. <gasps> oh! You call? <laughs> Peg, tell the gentleman what you'd like to hear. Music, maestro, please. Mustn't think 
much I need him. So, Mr. Leader, play your loving melody. Play wag jazz Just wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, that was George Liberace playing Music Maestro, Please, accompanied on the voice by Peggy King. <laughs> Peggy was just great. Thank you, George. Thanks a lot for holding my back. Oh, that's all right. I'm kind of used to it. You know, every time Alice gets into a fight with our butcher, I... Oh, I almost forgot her. See me. <laughs> well, what is that? Well, this is my little bitty buddy. <laughs> Well, what are you looking for, Peg? The rest of them. <laughs> Peg, that's all there is. See, this, this little fella hadn't been well. Matter of fact, I've been looking around for a good veterinarian to take him to. Oh, well, why don't you take him to Dr. Britton, the best veterinarian in Hollywood? Dr. Britton? Mm -hmm. Where's that? Well, you go straight down there. All right. Now, turn left. And it's right in the next set. <laughs> Dr. Britton speaking. <laughs> well, madam, I suggest that you put your dog on a special diet. Uh, let me recommend my own dog food, the Dr. Barbara Britton Bow Wow Breakfast. It comes in four delicious flavors, beef, liver, fish, and cat. <laughs> C-A-T That's the lazy dog <laughs> Yes, madam, I'll send them out right away Goodbye Well, good evening, sir, may I help you? Yes, the nurse told me to come <laughs> We were expecting a man doctor <laughs> Come, come, sir. In veterinary medicine, men and women are equal. Animal husbandry knows no sex. Doesn't that make it a little confusing for animal wifery? <laughs> Just sit down, please. And tell doctor your troubles. Well, it's not me, really. It's this little fellow right here. See, he's my buddy, and he's a genuine imported thoroughbred Mexican hairless. <coughs> Mexican hairless, but he's covered with hair. He's... See, he's very wealthy, and that's wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. <laughs> well, let's get some pertinent information. Uh, name, please. Goble. George Goble. George Goble. Well, that sounds familiar. Oh, isn't he on television? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, 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 
Well, what's the dog's name? Irving. <laughs> Irving Jose Rios. <laughs> He's adopted, you know. Uh, most dogs are. Well, we love him just as much as though he were our own flesh and blood. Don't you? Does Irving have a license? No, I do most of the driving myself. <laughs> well, well, I will admit now that on New Year's Eve, on the way home, Irving had to take the wheel. Well, Irving seems to be a very clever animal. Clever? <laughs> Makes all his own clothes, you know. <laughs> Mr. Goebel, the doctor is very busy. Will you please tell me what is wrong with Irving? Well, see, Irving... Uh, well, he's, he's always been the, hmm. gosh, we were expecting a man doctor. I am not a woman doctor. I am not a man doctor. I am an animal doctor. They have certainly improved on them animals since I was a boy. <laughs> All right, Mr. Goble, you will tell me what is Irving's trouble. Yes, I'll try. See, Irving, uh... <laughs> he chases cars. <laughs> All dogs chase cars. Irving catches <laughs> This little thing catches them? Yeah, foreign cars mostly. <laughs> Caught an MG last week. <laughs> Buried it. What about the driver? Who is he? I really don't know, but I haven't seen or heard anything from Clive Brook lately, have you? Mr. Goble, I can go along with this. Yes, if this is the way you want to play. <clears throat> Tell me, Mr. Goble, does he also bury bones? Well, it's funny that you'd ask that, you know, because Irving, every night there for a while, would go out and he'd always come home with a couple of bones, but he never buried them. He'd always take them out and put them in the garage. And I never figured that out, and last week it aroused my curiosity. And I went out there, and you know what this little devil was doing with them bones? No, what? He was building himself another dog. <laughs> he is unhappy. Oh, yeah, and it's getting worse, too. The darn fool went and built himself another male. <laughs> well, the poor thing obviously has a mental problem. Uh, many dogs in Hollywood do, you know. Inferiority complexes. Uh, yes, they do. You know it, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can help, Irving. Uh, if you'll just cooperate, Mr. Goebel, uh, please come here and lie down and tell me all about Irving. Now, just lie back. Relax. Relax. Now... Let's start when Irving was a little tiny puppy. <laughs> Madam, I told you before, control yourself. We're trying to do a sketch here. <laughs> We're trying to cure a psychosomatic puppy. <laughs> Fates preserve us, said Mrs. Jervis. Ducker, <laughs> uh, where were we? Please, will you tell me just one thing about Irving? Please concentrate. To the best of your knowledge, does Irving have a girlfriend? Well, I really don't know, but you know, just the other night I heard the dog next door singing, Let Me Go Irving. <laughs> Mr. 
Dr. Goebel. Hmm? You are making a mockery of this entire episode. I am much too busy for any more of this foolishness. Well, now, if that's the way you want to be remembered, you're writing your own ticket, you know. We don't have to stay here and be insulted. Let's go, Irving. Oh, now, just a minute, Mr. Goebel. You have taken up my time, and my time is valuable. That will be $50. Oh, well, see, Alice didn't give me my allowance this week, and, uh... You know, I think i got a way to square this, Irving. Don't you go away. You called again? <laughs> George, step into the office, will you? George, you'd do me a big favor if you'd uh, play about $50 worth of that fiddle music for this lady. Now, just a word, a word to our sponsor's wife. Control yourself, madam. We're going to mention your husband's product. <laughs> On your mark, get set, mention. The George Goble Show is sponsored by Dial Shampoo. The new shampoo that gives your hair a diamond spark. And mild, fragrant Dial Soap that stops perspiration odor before it starts. Next week, the George Goble Show will be brought to you by Pet Evaporated Milk, America's first evaporated milk, and Instant Pet Non-Fat Dry Milk, the new Miracle Milk product. It's not very polite to interrupt a young lady at a time like this, but a pet milk baby doesn't mind. She's used to being admired any time. Just see that strong, straight back. That's what pet evaporated milk does for babies. Helps them build straight, strong bones and to make sure, steady growth. Because pet evaporated milk has the right combination of milk minerals and vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. And pet milk is always uniformly rich, always easy for babies to digest. Isn't it wonderful to see a baby enjoy bottle time as much as this one does? And with pet evaporated milk in the formula, she's certainly getting a happy, sturdy start in life. For there is no better milk for babies than pet evaporated milk. Now, I have a confession to make to you. You know all that stuff about my dog, Irving? We made all that up, you know. <laughs> I don't even have a dog named Irving. And, and you know what else? We made up that stuff about Dr. Britton because there's no such person as Barbara Britton. Is there Barbara Britton? <laughs> no, we just mm. made that up, Yeah, too. her name is really Irving. <laughs> Good night, George. Good night, Irving. Good night, George. Oh, just a moment. I'm with you, Irving. <laughs> And we would like to thank Evelyn for loaning George Liberace her magic violin. Uh, immediately following this program, Mr. Liberace will play his new Columbia recording of Madalena for the studio audience, and there will be dancing in the parking lot. <laughs> and I see now by the old clock on the wall, it's time for us to be leaving you. This is your old friend, Lonesome George, hoping to be among the very first to wish you all a very festive Purim. So long, ladies. <laughs> This is Del Carver speaking for the George Goble Show, a Gamalco production. <laughs> <laughs>